Hi, this is the National Trail Internet Safety class that was developed for staff um, at National Trail Local Schools. It is being recorded at the request of the administration so that anyone that did not make it to the Internet Safety course uh, has the opportunity to um, get the information as well. So what we're going to be doing today basically is going over a little bit of internet safety as it uh, affects us both at school and at home and some terminology and things to make sure everyone is aware of. Now these are the four things I'm going to go over. I'm going to say that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on online predators. Well we have a lot of YouTube videos and training um, for our students. Really it's important that parents and staff members know that online predators target boys and girls and they are not selective of age. They um, are the uh, lowest of the low. They are master manipulators and prey on children uh, across the internet. There are a lot of really good YouTube videos um, with uh, some good information and training for both parents and uh, their children and if you are interested in any of those you can just Google them. If you can't find one that you think is appropriate please, please let me know and I can send you some links uh, to some good ones. But really as far as online predators I, I really want to make sure that, that you know that this exists and you're vigilant with both your kids here at school and your children at home if you have young young people at home and understand that they those people are out there and they pursue both boys and girls of any age. The, really the point of today's thing is to let you kind of know the dangers that are out there for us on our computers here at school and to know some of those terms. So the first one is is called phishing, pronounced phishing, uh, and it's the act of sending fake emails out to try to trick users into clicking on links and um, basically giving away their personal information um, or uh, password. So most of the time uh, they are trying to get you to follow a link to reset or to do something to enter your password in um, so that they can get your um, information. This is an example of one uh, that comes in the mail to many people. You'll see them from banks, from PayPal, from eBay. They're just sending it out hoping that you have an account and then they could scare you into clicking their link. It's important to know that you can make any link say anything you want it to. It looks like, yeah, this is going to PayPal.com. Sure, that must be a good link. But if you hover over that link, you'll see where it actually is going to. And anyone out there can make a website that looks exactly like the one that you're going to. Uh, you can go to a website and just save it, host it on your own server. You follow it, their link. You put in your username and password, and now they have your username and password to your bank account, to your PayPal. No bank usually emails you and says, follow this link to reset your password. And if you think it's a legitimate one, never follow the link. Just go to the site on your own, typing it up in the top of your own browser window, and if they want you to reset your password they'll tell you when you log in so that's phishing there's also something called spear phishing which is much more directed at you it may even have your name and address in there they're using personal identifiable information they've gotten from somewhere else to send something that looks like it's just for you so that's phishing Malware is a term that we use that really covers all malicious software uh, and that's where the term comes from it includes all the things that we normally know about like viruses um, but it includes all the other new things that have come out since viruses started uh, on computers so malware is all bad software the first kind of software that we talk about a lot and those of us that have been around for a while know about are viruses they're programs that you don't normally see they run in the background and they usually destroy things on your computer Viruses are the one thing that here at National Trail I'm not worried about. We have good antivirus software and it updates itself all the time and it um, automatically scans your computers. If you don't have a current operating system at home you need to install antivirus software but at home if you've got Windows 10 then you've got Windows Defender and that's what I use at home. It's perfectly fine for viruses and people don't understand that most of the things they get today are not viruses. Uh, this is what input looks like. You should have a little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen that looks like that. 
Uh, it's always updating itself and it's always scanning. If you click on the link right there where it says scan for threats, uh, you will see when it was last scanned. Mine was scanned on a full scan on the 6th. I did this a couple weeks ago, by the way. And uh, a uh, active scan on the 8th. You can run those scans on your own just by clicking those links. And if you click on them, this is what a scan looks like when it's in process. Now, one of the things to know about antivirus software here at National Trail is it doesn't ask you to do anything. Nothing at all. It doesn't ask you to clean it. It doesn't ask you to uh, approve of cleaning it. If it finds something, it's just going to tell you it did it, and that's it. it. Mine found this. It said it was deleted. It was a tracking cookie, and all my only option was to close it afterwards. If you get anything asking for approval to do something, it's not our software, and you should think about or probably just go ahead and reboot your computer. If you see something like that, you've probably gone to a questionable website that's done a drive-by download. So that's antivirus. Now, Trojan horses are one of the things that we get the most at National Trail, uh, or and probably the most thing that you get at home. Basically, it's when something you think you got isn't exactly what you got. Either it was misrepresented or it was from an infected site, which doesn't mean, a lot of people think that means pornography. It doesn't mean it's a pornography site. There's tons of good sites out there, particularly ones with free software, that they don't have the budget to have a real IT team, to have real protection, and they get infected by bad people going to good sites. So it doesn't mean you went to a bad place when you get one of these things. So Trojan horses look like one thing, but they end up installing something else. Uh, one of the things that you see a lot of is antivirus software that's not really antivirus software. There's no such thing as XP Antivirus 2008. It's a pop-up that's trying to get you to click on something so they can install something else on your computer. And it may have been something that came along with another piece of software that was free that you did install. This is another one. It's not real software. Just trying to get you to click on things to get things to install on your computer. Same thing with antivirus 2010. These look very legitimate, but they are not. And if you don't know that you installed it on your machine, then you probably didn't. It's probably a Trojan horse that came along with something else uh, or a side load from something from a bad website. It's another example of a bad one trying to get you click on stuff to try to get you to install stuff. You also want to try to avoid extra software. This happens a lot with free stuff, but it also happens with the legitimate sites. Like this is Adobe Flash Player, and they're trying to get you to install McAfee on top of it. And you can just unclick that when you go there so that you don't get that software too. Java does the same thing, trying to get you to install the Ask Toolbar and make that your default search provider when you download it. It's tracking software. Ask Toolbar is one of the worst toolbars that you could ever add onto your computer. And I would say the one of the worst legitimate uh, ones that you can add on your computer. So make sure when you're installing something, you don't or you read all those screens to make sure you don't get what you didn't ask for. And a lot of times anymore, it does it by default, and there's a little button that says that you don't want to install it. Scareware. Scareware is software that tries to scare you or trick you into getting something you didn't ask for. Uh, this happens a lot when uh, you get pop-ups. It doesn't mean you went to a bad site, but it means you were at some kind of infected site uh, that you'll get it. And a lot of times it looks like this. This one's fairly obvious because it's opened up inside our browser windows saying to call this phone number and we'll help you call, solve your problem. These are the same kind of things. They're trying to scare you into doing something else. But this is one of the ones that's happened recently to one of our staff members. It's a very very legitimate looking pop-up. I use Microsoft Windows Security or Microsoft Security Essentials. That is what the logo looks like. That is what the Microsoft logo looks like. They've gone and used all those to get make this really really good looking pop-up on their screen with a number to help you out. It's important to know there is no company, none, zero, none, not a one, 
legitimate company that gives you a phone number to call them with a pop-up window. And if you find one, I'd be interested to know. This one is not. It's trying to scare you into calling them and offering to help you out for free to fix this problem because that's what Microsoft does. They like calling people at home and helping them out with their security problems. And that is not true. Um, in the case of this particular one, uh, they said, oh, your, your PC is terrible. It's got this and this and this. And if you click on this link, we can remote into your computer and clean that for you. And, and the staff member uh, allowed them to remote into their computer. They said it took about two hours for them to clean everything off their computer and get it all fixed. Uh, I can assure you that during that two hours, they were in the background downloading all your personal information, your banking data, your PayPal information. All those things got downloaded in the background while they're acting like they're doing something for you. Don't ever, ever, ever call one of these numbers. Uh, and certainly uh, don't pay them money to buy their product. They're going to give you legitimate websites. They're going to sound legitimate on the phone. They're going to do all the right things to trick you into letting them into your computer, and you do not want to do that. I'm not saying you can't ever call a person, call a company, uh, and they have... You know, if you call Eden Computer, they might say, hey, we'd like to remote in and try to fix your computer. That's different. You've initiated the phone call to Eden Computer, and they use TeamViewer to do that, and that's fine. But don't call an anonymous company and go to a phone call system. Uh, that's what they're trying to scare you into doing, and that's what Scareware is. This is another piece of scareware, but it's also ransomware. It's basically saying that we've locked up your computer. You've done illegal things. You have to pay this fine. If you don't, you'll be arrested. Please go to Walmart and get some money for us and email it to us. And it's all these great places you can buy money packs. And my parents actually got this one on their computer at home. But worse than that one is what's called ransomware. Ransomware we had uh, in uh, May of this year uh, here at National Trail, and Eaton had an even worse case of ransomware at their school. It cost them in excess of $14,000 uh, worth of outside maintenance to try to get it fixed. Um, it's definitely a very, very bad thing. Uh, it encrypts all your files and says, if you don't pay me, you'll never see those files again. Uh, it's very legitimate in that you won't. Uh, it's an encryption method, I think, de originally developed by NSA, and it is unbreakable. Uh, there's nothing you can do to get through that I know of or I've been able to find through a crypto locker uh, encrypted key. The cost for getting your key to unlock your files is anywhere between $300 to $20,000. Uh, if it happens at National Trail to you, it would be in the thousands of dollars because they know they've done a business. Uh, if it's at your home, it'd be in the realm of $300. This is a home one. Uh, that This one's really around $250. It doesn't destroy your computer. It destroys all the data in your computer. Your pictures, your Word documents, your Excel documents. Uh, there's a whole list of documents that will be encrypted uh, with these kind of um, ransomware uh, attacks, and there isn't a way to get it back. This is just one screen that it looks like, and I should there, say there isn't a way. You can pay them and hope you get a key and hope you get your files back. If they're your kids' pictures and there's no other way to get them back, Maybe you decide it is worth $300 to try to get those files back. Um, but there's no guarantee that you are. And even when you do, you need to get those files to another drive and immediately wipe your machine, or they could be encrypted again. And my research says that if they're double encrypted, you won't ever get them back, even if you do pay the money. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got those files um, safely secured somewhere else. This is another picture of ransomware encryption. This one's approximately $550 US in order to um, decrypt and get your files back. And here's another one. They don't all look the same. These are from all different bad people out there that um, are going to uh, let you pay them to get, look, you can pay. You have 67 hours left before your files are gone forever. And then you get one decrypt so you can see that it works. They're going to they're gonna let you decrypt one file to see that, see, we can do it, and now you need to pay us so that you can get all the rest of the keys and decrypt all the rest of your files. Uh, I This is one of the worst ones, by the way. 
ransomware usually attacks with a unidentified or an unexpected attachment on an email. There are some other ways that you get them, but most of the time it happens from a simple email attachment. They're from something like this, looks legitimate from FedEx. This is a ransomware uh, attack, and it says, hey, here's your order history. You can see when your package is going to be in. You just click on that, and you'll be able to open it up and see that. That is not true. Many times they come from uh, copiers because almost every business has a copier and account any, anymore, just like we do. You might get one from copier at nationaltrail.us and think it's legitimate, which is why I really recommend that if uh, you're a secretary and you need to send a copy, a scanned copy to someone, copy it to yourself because you know you just did it and then forward it to the person. That's what Tanya Plankenhorn does for me. She copy, she'll scan the visa bill and then forward it to me so that I know it came from her. So I know it's a real thing that she just scanned versus if I just get something from the copier that I didn't expect, I don't open it. Uh, I might call down to the district office and say, hey, did you just send me a scan? And they'll go, yeah, we just scanned this to you. Then I will. But if I don't expect it or don't know it's coming, I don't click on it. So what we, can we do? We can avoid using Internet Explorer. It has no safeguards compared to what Chrome and Firefox have built into them. So I would recommend avoiding Internet Explorer. Don't click on unknown links. If you didn't expect it, don't click on it. It can look just like a, a PDF document, and you click on it, and you just infected yourself. So if you didn't expect it, don't open it. Uh, many times I'll get one and I'll call or email back to the sender and say, hey, did you mean to send me this? What is it? Uh, before I'll open it. So, and the last thing is read every install screen uh, and double check those check marks before you do any kind of installs on your computer. Those are things that we can do to try to safeguard ourselves here, both at home and at work, from uh, attacks. If you do get an attack, please call me right away. When we had a ransomware attack, we were all cleaned up and back in working order within uh, about two and a half hours. Uh, you will lose anything that's on your local hard drive, anything that's on my documents or your desktop. But anything you had in your network drive, like your T drive, uh, those things are all backed up every day. And I should be able to recover those things for you as of the last successful backup Sometimes backups don't aren't successful, but 90% or more of the time they are. So um, try to keep things on your network drive, and this kind of attack really won't have a lasting effect on you at all. Please let me know, though, because if you have an attack like this and you don't let me know, we can waste a lot more time and money trying to find it, like what happened at Eaton Community Schools, uh, than the person called me right away and we had it taken care of and it was no big deal. No one e even knew that we had the attack other than that person and the people that shared those network drives that that person had access to. So that's it for our uh, internet safety class here at National Trail for our staff. Thanks.